Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin Wassalatu wassalamu ala nabiyyil amin Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in Rabbi shrah li sadri wa yassil li amri Wa ahlul uqdatan min lisani yafqahu qawli Amin ya rabbal alamin Amma ba'd uh, Dear brothers and sisters uh, In this chapter uh, we uh, will discuss the investment environment uh, so, uh, and the Sharia compliance. So, environment, inv investment environment. We'll talk about um, the investors, the uh, the platform of the investment, like share market or capital market, and then the uh, types of investors and also the the assets, different types of assets. We'll talk about. Uh, and then we also talk about uh, the tax regulation, which is uh, also important to investment. And finally, we'll talk about uh, the Sharia compliance uh, of investments and <coughs> especially uh, investment in, in securities that uh, will uh, we'll focus on the Malaysian uh, structure of Sharia compliance. <coughs> So generally, if we talk about uh, investment environment, we need to talk about the assets and the investors, financial intermediary, the markets. So these are the four uh, important players uh, which are related to uh, investment. So first about investment assets. So there are two types of assets. One is the real asset and the another one is the financial asset. So real asset is very simple, which are tangible and can be used to produce a good or services that we can see, we can touch, and uh, it can produce uh, more assets like machines, factories, land, um, properties. So all these are real asset that is real, we can touch, we can see. But the financial asset is intangible and it represents uh, claims on the revenue generated from real asset like bonds and stocks. So financial asset is uh, sometimes we, is, is just in the system where we cannot uh, maybe see and touch but it is, it is something that uh, it represents our claim on assets and, we, uh, and claim on getting uh, 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 some uh, profit uh, from that asset. So the example of financial asset is, is bond or for Sharia perspective, we can say sukuk or stocks or, or shares or derivatives. So all these are financial asset or it can be said as paper asset. Mm. So these uh, financial assets can be sometimes called securities. Uh, it is a generic term for a financial asset is, is security where um, any financial asset uh, can be named as securities. Uh, so a security is a legal claim on the revenue streams of financial assets or real assets. So a security is a, is a claim, uh, same like, um, unlike the uh, physical asset, uh, it is a legal claim on the revenue streams or the uh, profit or the proceeds from a financial asset or any real asset. So, there are three types of uh, securities generally. First is the equity securities, two is the debt securities, and the third is the derivative securities. So, equity securities are the securities where uh, the, the claim uh, is based on the concept of partnership, where if, if, we, uh, if we own uh, an equity, it means we have a share in in a certain company, so we are entitled to have um, profit, and maybe we are, uh, we can uh, vote in the annual general meeting. So that is equity securities. Number two is the debt securities, where debt security is uh, based on uh, data and creditor relationship. Means that the company, if we buy a security issued by a company or the government, it means that the the company owes to us. Uh, so um, they will, uh, the company will pay us um, profit or interest and also we can uh, redeem uh, the security uh, at any time or at uh, maturity. So that is a uh, debt securities. So which is uh, um, the example of debt securities are Sukuk, 
can be sukuk or can be born <coughs> from conventional perspective uh, or uh, money market instruments. Number three is the derivative securities. So derivatives are uh, some uh, something where uh, their values are actually uh, derived from something else. That's why it is called derivatives. The example of derivatives are like futures, forwards, options, swaps. So these are the examples of derivative securities. So these securities are basically uh, used to mitigate uh, risk uh, or sometimes in conventional markets they use to, to speculate. But, ba but basically they are to, uh, to mitigate the, the risk, uh, risk of loss. For example, in options. Uh, options are um, people buy an uh, option because to, to mitigate the, the risk of loss. Uh, so that, that's, uh, that is the example of uh, derivatives. So <laughs> after the assets, we get the general idea of assets. Let's look at the investor. <coughs> So usually there are um, four types of investors. First is the household, uh, retail investors, the households, the households that have a surplus of income uh, or savings. So they usually invest, they buy the securities. And the second is the institutional investors like uh, mutual funds, banks, insurance companies, and financial institutions. So for example, uh, the mutual funds, they pull the fund from a number of retail investors, for example, from households, and then they invest. So they usually have a big amount of money to, to invest. And sometimes the government also invests in the, uh, in the, in the local uh, share market. Uh, so governments uh, can be also uh, important uh, player in investment. And the fourth one is the foreigners. Sometimes the foreign funds uh, come to uh, uh, country because uh, they they may feel uh, 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 they feel, uh, want return or they want to invest in if the foreigners they buy the shares of our local share market so uh, they also uh, get return and this is uh, also important uh, for the country's uh, development as well so foreigners mostly um, the institutional investors uh, they uh, they uh, they invest uh, in uh, different share markets. Uh, however, even the governments or one government can invest in another uh, country's uh, share markets or even can buy uh, their bonds and others. So these are the four types uh, the, of investors that we can uh, generally categorize. And then the financial market. Uh, so this is the the platform where uh, which will uh, where both the, the the investors they will uh, meet with the, uh, the with the other parties. Uh, uh, so this is a platform. It exists to facilitate the flow of funds from the savers or lenders to the investors or borrowers. So is. Um, uh, usually in our uh, financial system, we have two uh, units okay, or two sectors. One is the surplus unit, another one is the uh, deficit unit. So surplus unit means those who need, uh, uh, those who have extra in, uh, money, those who have savings. So the surplus unit, they want to invest, they want to lend money uh, to the others so that they can uh, save and they can have in, uh, income from the profit or from the, the investment return. And at the same time, we have other uh, unit of the society of the financial system, which are the uh, the deficit unit. The deficit unit are can be the households or governments or companies that uh, they lack um, funding, so uh, they have. Um, they need money to, uh, in order, for example, for their companies to grow, or some households they need money to buy uh, something like house or, or a car, uh, or sometimes the government also can be in deficit in order to pay the salary of the employees. Uh, so uh, that deficit unit usually becomes the uh, the borrower 
okay uh, borrower in the uh, financial market so the financial markets uh, can uh, can be divided in different types some are called primary market and secondary market so primary market are where the initially the securities are issued uh, the the first uh, uh, when the uh, share of a company is issued that is the primary market and the secondary market is where after the um, security is issued and then it is bought and sold among the investors so that is the secondary market and then in terms <coughs> of the duration we can divide the financial market into capital market and money market so capital market is where long-term invest uh, uh, securities are traded like sukuk or bonds and also the shares but money market is where for short-term uh, securities uh, is less usually the maturity is less than one year uh, so usually like uh, interbank money markets uh, where uh, the banks uh, they uh, uh, buy and they trade uh, their securities uh, just for a very uh, short term sometimes for, for a few days to a few months so this is uh, a financial market where it plays a very important role to bring the uh, the surplus uh, unit to the deficit unit it is a platform to uh, to gather uh, both the borrower and the lender and after the uh, so the, the the financial market has, as i said okay that it has very important role the first is to facilitate the flow of funds from surplus unit to the deficit unit and economy so in an economy those who have surplus of income they have saving so they will meet with the deficit unit well, the deficit unit which are uh, lacking uh, the deficit unit which are lacking uh, uh, savings or they need more funds so they can meet uh, with the uh, surplus unit in the through the financial market and efficiency in security trading so if there is no financial market it will be difficult for the deficit unit to to meet the um, uh, surplus unit it would require some kind uh, you know the uh, the uh, to contact and also it may to get the information it will be difficult so uh, financial market makes it very efficient and the third is uh, savings for the surplus unit so uh, while, while uh, the surplus unit they may save their money in bank but a financial market also provides a platform for them to save through buying the financial securities uh, and also to get also return uh, or get profit from their savings and also the investment uh, another important player of uh, in an investment environment is the financial intermediaries uh, they are actually the the banks or investment banks or even the uh, can be the mutual funds so these financial companies are different from other companies as their business in financial assets so they mostly uh, uh, take uh, savings uh, uh, take money from the surplus unit and then they lend to the deficit unit so it brings together the surplus fund unit and deficit funds unit so it will um, so those who have surplus funds they will put money let's say a bank where those who have the savings those who have surplus amount of money they will save their money in bank and then those who are in uh, deficit uh, okay those who have a lack of funds so they will go to bank and then they will borrow so the bank will bring together the surplus unit and the deficit unit so it issues uh, sometimes the financial intermediaries they also issue their own uh, securities uh, for the uh, to the investors and then it pulls the funds of small investors so usually the investment banks they will they also sometimes uh, work like the mutual funds they will pull the fund, they will pull the fund from small investors and they will invest on behalf of their uh, of the small investors so this is uh, their role so financial intermediary what's the difference between um, 
the sh capital market or financial market with the financial intermediary is that uh, financial intermediary the banks they they are uh, direct okay it is a uh, it uh, it uh, directly interferes so it where the surplus uh, they take the money from the surplus unit and then they channel to the uh, deficit unit but in the uh, financial market it is open okay it is kind of indirect where uh, the companies uh, issue their shares or uh, uh, their the securities and then the uh, the, uh, the, uh, the surplus unit uh, they will buy so it is more open and it's a kind of indirect uh, uh, where the financial uh, financial intermediary it itself will will handle the the fund okay where you know the uh, uh, the financial intermediaries it is also important to know uh, especially for the investors or the new investors that the brokerage companies are very important in for investment so these are the brokerage companies are the agents that help to bring buyers and sellers together without them a transaction can never be completed so these brokerage companies are, uh, are very important for financial markets in order to uh, purchase a shares or um, or bond or suku or any derivatives uh, instrument if someone uh, a person an ordinary person if he wants to uh, invest in share market so he needs to uh, register with the brokerage firm he needs to open an account uh, with the brokerage firm then he will be uh, able to trade he will be able to buy and sell uh, securities in a share market so usually the brokerage companies they receive compensation by means of commission once the transaction has successfully completed so they work uh, as wakil or as a as a broker and their fee uh, is uh, on uh, as a commission from wakala so these are the some of the prominent uh, brokerage firms in malaysia i think there are more than uh, 30 brokerage firms but i just show uh, some of them uh, like afin hawang malacca securities bimb uh, CGSC, IMB, Securities, uh, Maybank Investment, Bank Barhat. So if someone wants to invest in share market, he can uh, open an account with these uh, uh, brokerage firms and then he can, uh, along with a, a CDS account with Bursa Malaysia, uh, and then he can start to trade. And with this uh, investment environment, it is very important is the investment information. Uh, is uh, so uh, with the change of a com it is very important for an investor before to invest to buy share of any company uh, to uh, we need to know uh, what is going on in the market which sector is uh, growing which which sector what government policy is having an impact on certain business sector so we need uh, very timely up to date uh, information related to uh, different companies and businesses so investors need timely information to make rational choices on different investment alternatives and financial markets and brokerage firms usually publish financial information and analysis so all the uh, financial markets they will uh, provide updated uh, information on different companies and they will publish uh, uh, the update of the uh, market changes uh, and there are numerous sources of information uh, uh, there are many companies uh, they provide source and also sometimes they provide some uh, information of a company uh, like their, their uh, financial strength and others but they with uh, they charge a fee so these are the some of the uh, companies like Wall Street Journal uh, this is uh, mostly for in US, okay, uh, Financial Times, Bloomberg, The Economist, uh, Forbes, the, and in related to Malaysia, the Bursa Malaysia uh, in their website, they provide uh, information related to uh, the business and companies. The Asia markets uh, is very helpful to know uh, the latest uh, business information and the corporate uh, information in Malaysia, similarly Business Insider Malaysia. And Islamic finance news is mostly related to uh, 
the updated information on Islamic finance, uh, sukuk, and other uh, instruments. So now, uh, the tax regulation is also very uh, important for an investor. It is a part of the, the financial uh, planning or Islamic wealth management to, to plan the tax so that someone can, uh, can pay the less tax uh, just through uh, planning. And he is aware of uh, his uh, tax uh, payment, his obligation. So if you look at the Malaysian uh, tax, uh, the first important uh, thing is about the income tax. So the law uh, governing income tax uh, is the Income Tax Act 1967. So, however, every year there is a change on the on the income tax. Means uh, there is a new uh, regulation or parameters on what are the income so are charged and which are the what are the rebates uh, or what are the really income uh, relief. So it may change in different fiscal year. But however, usually it is uh, 24 percent. Like in 2021 and previous year, it was uh, 24 percent generally. Uh, okay. Uh, usually, the companies uh, uh, pay a single tax rate of 24%. It is a general. However, there may have some exceptions. And the law governing the petroleum tax is uh, Petroleum Income Tax Act 1967. So, this is a single tax rate is 38%. So, any income uh, from, uh, from selling the petroleum, uh, okay, will be uh, just 38% of uh, tax. So, uh, in relation to the, the personal income, what are the chargeable income that uh, will be uh, calculated for tax? So, all income derived within Malaysia are subject to tax, and chargeable income is the taxable income. And it is derived by computing the gross income less the tax relief on the person, his dependents, and other expenses that is allowed tax deduction. So usually the chargeable income or the taxable income is the gross salary minus uh, the tax relief. Uh, so the government uh, announces the, the tax reliefs every year, like uh, buying books, computers. Uh, so all these uh, are deducted as, as, tax re uh, as tax relief from the gross income. And then uh, there is a tax deduction based on the number of dependents of a person, like for the wife, if he's not, she's not working, okay, the spouse and the children. Uh, so from the gross salary, uh, the, ta uh, it, uh, the tax relief will be deducted and then uh, some other uh, deduction because uh, based on the uh, number of uh, dependents. Uh, and then the, uh, the income tax rate is... Uh, for individuals is 26%. Resident individuals are taxed at uh, graduated rates from 0 to 26% usually. So uh, there is a benchmark of salary. If it reaches a certain benchmark, then they will be pay, uh, they have to pay more uh, uh, tax. So in Malaysia, uh, the taxpayers are required to uh, calculate their own tax. Uh, it is a self-assessment is an approach where taxpayers are required by law to determine their taxable incomes, compute their tax liability, and submit their tax returns based on existing tax laws. So this one, uh, based on this regulation, it is uh, compulsory for all uh, to to plan their tax, uh, so to plan their finance, so that in which way uh, they can pay uh, less tax, okay, or uh, which way uh, which will be uh, more efficient uh, for them to manage their finance. Uh, so these are the example of tax relief income, like personal retirement saving up to uh, 3,000 ringgit Malaysia are uh, receive tax relief, insurance premium paid up to 7,000 and purchase of books or int uh, or paying internet uh, will get tax relief. And these are the tax rebates. So rebates and relief are different. Relief is uh, the income that will be excluded from the 
taxable income. But tax rebates is uh, how uh, it is deducted directly from the amount should be paid for tax. So if someone uh, after the deduction of the tax relief and other deductions, so uh, how uh, when the tax amount is charged, so from that amount, uh, rebates will be given if someone spend for these categories like um, uh, okay, first, if someone's salary is 35,000, so he doesn't need to pay tax at all. And then if someone pays zakat, fitra, and other religious dues, so it will be deducted from the tax. So if someone pays zakat, he does, uh, so the, uh, if uh, the zakat amount uh, is similar to tax uh, amount payable, so he doesn't need to pay tax at all. Or if it is less than the tax amount payable, so it will be deducted from the uh, tax and the rebate for personal computers, rebate for fees for employment and visit passes for is for foreigners if they uh, pay for uh, em employment pass or visit pass. So these are the example of rebates. Again, uh, uh, there may have some changes uh, in different fiscal years. And tax ex uh, tax exemption, retirement gratuities are fully exempted if. Uh, the retirement is due to ill health or at compulsory retirement is. So uh, if uh, someone is uh, retiring due to ill health, so that his, uh, the gratuities or the, um, uh, the, in Malaysia we use uh, EPF, the, the employment provident fund, the money received from, uh, from that is, is not taxable. And uh, so if someone is retiring due to ill health or due to uh, compulsory retirement age, which is uh, 60 years of old. Okay, now uh, the in, uh, in, uh, income, investment income. So usually the tax, uh, the dividends earned from, the, um, but, uh, from selling the shares are uh, exempted. Uh, gains from the realization of investments other than uh, real property, which may be subject to real property gain tax. So uh, within Malaysia are not subject to uh, tax. Means that um, dividends earned from, uh, uh, from the shares, okay, and also uh, profit earns from selling shares or uh, sukuk or other financial instruments, there is no tax on that. However, if there is a profit from selling the real property, like uh, real estate, so there is a tax for that. Uh, uh, how even uh, in the com uh, in Malaysia, uh, the companies they require they are required to to pay tax before they de uh, declare dividends to uh, their shareholders. So uh, the shareholders, when they receive dividend, they are not required to pay. Tax. However, there is a uh, stamp duty. Investors need to pay stamp duty for buying and selling shares. Uh, the stamp duty is RM1 for every 1,000 ringgit of transaction. However, it may uh, change. So this is generally one, uh, one ringgit. Uh, now the real property gain tax. Uh, if someone uh, sells uh, property, real estate, uh, uh, then there is a tax uh, is the the real property gain tax in 1976 but it also uh, has some changes in every fiscal year so it is a tax on capital gains arising from sale of any interest or right over land in Malaysia so if we sell any uh, real estate uh, or, or any land in Malaysia so there will be a tax so the rate is right now is 30% for the disposal within three years of acquisition. So if someone sells a land uh, within three years after purchasing it, so he will be just 30%. But if after uh, there are there is a different rate if it is after five or 10 years. And there is no tax for getting inheritance in Malaysia. So if someone receives uh, inheritance from uh, his uh, deceased uh, parents or uh, siblings, so there will be no tax on that. And finally, the sales and services tax, uh, SST. It is important for, especially for, for businesses. Uh, uh, so it is replaced by GST. So this is a single stage uh, tax levied on imported and locally manufactured goods, either 
at the time of importation or at the time the goods are sold or otherwise uh, disposed of by the manufacturer. So SST will be charged only on one level, either at the final uh, level or at the time of importation or, um, or the during the time of uh, selling. Uh, and SST has uh, two charge. One is 10% for sales, uh, for for selling asset, and 6% for services for selling pro, for selling any services. So this is all about uh, the general uh, information that an investor uh, needs to keep in mind in Malaysia before they invest. So after uh, the in, uh, taxes, the Sharia compliance of the investment is, is uh, very important. <clears throat> so how to make sure the, the, the investment, the securities that we, uh, we buy or we invest, they are Sharia compliant. So in order to, um, in order to keep the Sharia compliance, if we look at uh, different parts of the walls, we can divide them into three. Some jurisdiction they have regulated centralized framework some of the jurisdictions they have regulated decentralized framework and some of the jurisdictions they are unregulated okay. so usually the regulated and centralized framework means there is a centralized body there, uh, in that country that will give the sharia regulation but un a decentralized framework means that there is no central body to regulate uh, the Sharia compliance. However, uh, every individual financial institution or companies, they require to have their own uh, Sharia body to, to, uh, to ensure the Sharia compliance. And some of the countries, they are unregulated, means there is no um, regulation by the government, there is no central regulation, but they still follow the uh, Sharia compliance due to market force in order to uh, fulfill the expectation of the investors or the customers. So now in Malaysia, it is actually a centralized uh, regulation. So there is a regulator, which is the Securities Commission Malaysia, SCM so and that SCM it has a national Sharia advisory council is Sharia advisory council under uh, with the uh, Securities Commission of Malaysia and then uh, <clears throat> under the Securities Commission Malaysia uh, they also have a list of appointed Sharia advisors for companies so if any company wants to issue securities they may appoint uh, any of the Sharia advisors from that listed, uh, 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 from that list of the Sharia advisors. And then those Sharia advisors will also make sure there is Sharia compliance and some companies may have Sharia audit and uh, review in order to ensure the Sharia compliance. So let us look at the role on uh, look at the National Sharia Advisory Council. So at the central level, okay, this is different from the Bank Negara's uh, Sharia Advisory Council. This is uh, the Sharia National Sharia Advisory Council un, uh, under the Securities Commission Malaysia. So the uh, Islamic is uh, so it will examine and endorse the application of companies want to raise capital through. ICM or Islamic Capital Market. So the National Sharia Advisory Council under the Securities Commission, they will uh, examine or assess if any company wants to be listed in the Bursa Malaysia, whether they are um, they will be listed as Sharia compliant or not. And it also the, provides resolutions on uh, issues related to ICM. If there are some products like uh, short selling, okay, contra trading, there are some issues, uh, so they will give uh, fatwa on that and advising the um, Securities Commission Authority on Sharia matter related to uh, any uh, transactions. And it is works as a reference center for any Sharia issues uh, uh, raised uh, during the trading of shares and other securities. And it endorsing the list of Sharia compliance securities. So it will endorse and it will publish usually every six months uh, the Securities uh, Commission Malaysia will publish the list of Sharia compliant shares. So if anyone wants to know whether this share is Sharia compliant or not, they just need to uh, go to uh, Securities Commission Malaysia's website and they can 
uh, download the list of Sharia compliance securities, which is free, uh, free available. And it also Sharia, uh, the National Sharia Advisory Council also assess other uh, Islamic capital market products like uh, Sharia compliant ETF, uh, like derivatives, like Islamic uh, swaps or, or options. Uh, so they will assess whether they are Sharia compliant or not. And under the um, National Sharia Advisory Council, there are appointed Sharia advisors, means uh, the Securities Commission of Malaysia have a list where uh, in that list, they list down all the registered Sharia advisors uh, in Malaysia. So if any company wants to issue any um, security like Suku, for example, or um, the uh, halal share or Sharia compliant investments, so they may appoint some of uh, these Sharia advisors from their list. And these Sharia advisors can be even companies. That company can have some also Sharia officers uh, to, to assist the Sharia advisors. Uh, so they are the Sharia advisors. They are uh, they get licensed based on their expertise uh, in fiqh, uh, fiqh mu'amalat, and also they are based on their expertise in Islamic finance. So here we can see that uh, in the Malaysia, it is that the regulation is uh, is quite uh, efficient because it lists down the the app, the Shari list of the Sharia advisors. So uh, if any company appoints any Sharia advisor other than the list, so uh, it will not be approved. Uh, so this one, uh, this list is actually to to mitigate uh, uh, some issues because uh, some uh, sometimes some companies they may you know resort to some Sharia advisors which may uh, you know who are like uh, known as very flexible. Uh, or who may not have the expertise uh, on uh, on the uh, on this field. So, in order to avoid these issues, uh, the Securities Commission have li uh, listed uh, the registered uh, and approved uh, Sharia advisors. <coughs> and then a consulting firm also can be a Sharia advisor, and it may appoint some Sharia officer as full-time basis to assist them. <coughs> And any um, uh, okay, firm that is giving the Sharia advisory service, uh, uh, should, they should be free from any criminal breach and also uh, winding up order, means they should not be bankrupt. Um, some of the example can be like uh, Amani advisors. They are Sharia, they are very famous uh, Sharia adv uh, advisory firm in Malaysia and in the world, uh, headed by uh, Dr. Daud Bakar. And then uh, appointed Sharia advisors should advise the corporation on the issuance of Sharia compliant products. So they will, especially on Sukuk, uh, they will advise, uh, they will go through the prospectus and advise how to make it Sharia compliant. And even for mutual fund like public mutual, they also appointed uh, Amani advisors as their Sharia advisor or REITs. Uh, it's like Islamic REITs. Uh, REITs is a... Uh, uh, real estate investments, uh, but it is a, a um, is something uh, uh, is different than the uh, the real estate investment is through the the share market through the pool of fund. So in order for it to be Sharia compliant, there are also uh, some parameters that the Sharia advisors will uh, will assess. And then uh, audit is also uh, some important. Uh, okay, so this uh, Sharia audit and review will make sure that the companies are following the Sharia. However, unlike the the banks, okay, unlike the banks which are um, under Bank Negara, the the companies which issue uh, which issue halal shares or Sharia compliant securities, they are not required or means that it is not compulsory for them to have. Uh, Sharia audit and review. Rather, it is optional. And the reason for uh, for this is that uh, unlike the Bank Negara, the Securities Commission in Malaysia cannot interfere in the internal affair of the companies. So they are, the companies, they are free 
uh, in terms of their internal matters. Uh, the Securities Commission cannot uh, uh, force them to, to have a Sharia review and audit. Rather, they can uh, supervise and they can uh, make sure the compliance uh, through Sharia advisors and also at the, at the national level. So that is the, um, uh, there is a, may, may have a, a gap in that, uh, but generally uh, it, uh, the Sharia compliance in Malaysia is, is uh, centralized and well uh, regulated uh, comparing with, with other uh, jurisdiction. So that's all on the, uh, on this chapter. So, have already uh, we have already discussed um, the the investment environment the assets the financial markets uh, types of investors uh, and uh, financial intermediaries uh, and then the tax regulation and the sharia compliance so with that i thank you assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh